All right, next we're going to look at feedback example number two. So I'm going to draw an amplifier. All right, so here's our amplifier. Now we need to check to see what the connections are. So at the input, I can go either through the amplifier to complete the circuit, or I can go through the feedback network. So this is a shunt connection at the input. Now from the output, again, I can either go through the amplifier or through the feedback network. So this is also a shunt connection. So in our normal parlance for the amplifier, this is a shunt, shunt, feedback, shunt at the input, shunt at the output. This is a current at the input, voltage at the output, or a trans resistance amplifier. And this means that we're going to use Y parameters for our feedback network. All right, so I know that I have a current input and a voltage output. All right, let's start by calculating our network. Before I do that, one thing I'm going to note is how do I get a current at the input? Well, the easiest way to get a current at the input is to put a voltage source VI and say that it has some series resistance associated with it. Because of the virtual ground, this means that, the, that there's a virtual ground on the other side of this resistor, and our IN is equal to VI over RS. And of course there's a minus sign here since the reference current is going the opposite direction from the calculation. All right, so now we can calculate our network parameters. We're going to calculate Y12, which will equal beta, and then we're going to calculate Y11 and Y22, which will be our loading on the network. Uh, now, one thing I didn't label the feedback resistor, let's call the feedback resistor RF. All right, so let's start by calculating Y12, which is beta. All right. So Y12 is equal to beta is equal to I1 over V2 when V1 is equal to zero. So here we're going to place a voltage source, V2. We're going to short circuit port one, and we're going to measure the current I1 that would flow as a result of V2. Now this is equal to minus 1 divided by RF. Let's next do Y11. Okay, Y11 is equal to I1 over V1 when V2 is equal to zero. So here we're going to short our output port, or our second port, and we're going to place a test voltage source, V1, and measure the current I1 that flows from that test source. Of course, this means that Y11 is equal to one divided by RF. Now at this point, we note that the network is symmetric. In other words, it looks the same when I look into port one or port two. And from that symmetry, I can say that Y22 must be equal to Y11. In other words, I can say that Y22 is equal to one divided by RF. All right, now let's calculate our forward gain and the open loop. We'll have to load the amplifier with our 
Y11 and Y22 parameters. All right, so here's my amplifier. Now I'm going to break the feedback loop and replace the feedback loop with the load. Here I've placed 1 divided by Y11 at the input, which is equal to RF, and I've replaced the feedback connection at the output with 1 divided by Y22, which was also equal to RF. Alright, so now I'm going to find my gain V out over IN. At the input, I have a current division. RF divided by RF plus RN is equal to the current that's going to flow into the input resistance. And I'm going to convert that to a voltage V1 by multiplying it by the input resistance. At the output, I just have a voltage division. So I have AV times RF divided by RO plus RF. All right, so this is my current gain. I might denote this as equal to, or sorry, my trans resistance gain. I might denote this as little r zero. Now this isn't to be confused with the output resistance of a MOS or BJT device. Now here, if we look, we don't want to make RF too small. If we do, then the divisions at the input and output would be too significant and they would reduce the overall open loop gain. Okay, to finish up, we need to find the closed loop gain. The closed loop gain is equal to the open loop trans resistance gain, little r sub zero, divided by one plus little r sub zero times beta. Of course, if little r sub zero is big, this is approximately equal to one over beta. This closed loop gain is equal to V out over I n, and is equal to approximately minus R f. Now, if we want to find the voltage gain, V out over V n, it would just be equal to minus R f, times 1 divided by RE or equal to minus RF over RE. Now this is exactly what we expect for an inverting amplifier, which is what this looks like. Our input resistance before feedback is equal to RI in parallel with RF and after feedback it's a shunt connection, so we're going to reduce this by 1 plus little r0 times beta. Our output resistance after feedback is equal to the output resistance, which would be equal to little r0 in parallel, or big R0 in parallel with Rf, divided by 1 plus little r0 times beta. In other words, it's also a shunt connection, and so the overall resistance is reduced. Finally, with all feedback amplifiers, F3dB after feedback is equal to F3dB before feedback times 1 plus the loop gain. All right, so there's our shunt-shunt amplifier example. We'll do another example in the next video.